بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Today while I was wandering in the Isle of Wight a person told me about there was a masjid and a mosque in this place which is called Newport and alhamdulillah I managed to get to the masjid and I met some of the brothers one of the brothers that's really captured my attention and I would like you to meet this brother he is called brother Abdul Malik uh, you could see, mashallah, from the way that he looks, he's a white person, blonde person, mashallah. But there is something very f sort of fascinating about the brother, and he didn't mind me recording him, that he comes from a background which I would like Abdul Malik to talk about. So, go ahead, Abdul Malik, please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ana ismi Abdul Malik Jamal Khanif. I came to Islam, inshallah, 24 years ago. Uh, before this, I was uh, a heavy metal punk musician. Um, I grew up, had a good education, but I was rebellious. I was like a, a human version of Iblis in the way that I rebelled. I would not bend my neck to anything. I questioned everything I was taught. I questioned history. I questioned that there was history and there is his story. There are truth and there are lies. And I rebelled against... Uh, the British way of, uh, of everything. Oh, I never drunk, I never did these things, but I used to, I thought I will rebel against the system, against the governments that I think are unfair, I will do it through music. Alhamdulillah. So I did uh, music that cr um, c criticized the government, criticized the society I lived in, thinking this would also make me happy. Happiness doesn't come from the outside, happiness comes from within. And now no, happiness as, as water, and life itself comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time, I thought I could make myself happy with, through the music. I thought following my own ideas and the ideas of others would uh, make Islam, uh, would make uh, you know, my life complete. So what did I do? I played loud music and I deafened a generation. I'm tattooed and I was pierced. And way before all the people were doing this thing, now it is commonplace. Then, 20 odd years ago, it was unusual and it was very uncommon. You can see by the holes in my ears. They are not from uh, fighting in Afghanistan, astaghfirullah. Uh, unfortunately, they are from my own stupidity. But we did these things and we, d and we live with the consequences. Would you like to just to show me a bit of your chest? I could see some tattoos in your neck. Oh, it's, uh, it's, this would be difficult. But if I say that the tattoos goes from here, right the way across and down. No problem, there's no aura there, isn't anyway. So we could um, just show me your neck a bit. Oh. That's all. Wow. MashaAllah. I understand that you were ha half Irish mm. and that, that the father side, subhanAllah. Let me just take a. SubhanAllah, <laughs> la ilaha illallah. Everywhere. You could imagine what such a, what a person he was and when he was at that time. Now, at the moment, I can just say to the brother that he had some light in his face because of the light of the hidayah, the nur of the Islam, the guidance, yeah. or the darkness of that heavy metal, what he said. It was satanic way, wasn't it? And yes, I would say it was. I would also say that it was d done through anger, anger at, uh, at for various reasons. Anger at society, anger at things that I didn't understand, anger at uh, that there must be more in life than just property, money, and health and uh, wealth. Uh, these things are, uh, everybody says, this is the meaning of life. Uh, I've always thought there was a God, and I always asked where he was. I looked at every ism. I had a good university education, but I, you know, I, I, I argued against everything. Yeah, and at the end of the day, I looked at Christianity, and they were saying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a son, and I could not accept this. For if Allah needed a son, that would mean he has a, a weakness. He, ha he is in need of an heir. He, uh, if you have a son, you're going to die, he takes over. Why do you need this if, if he's all sustaining and all powerful? So this did not make sense. I looked at the Hinduism and they uh, worshipping the statues. And I said to one, if I break your statue, will your, will your, will your statue come and hurt me? Supreme. I didn't even know about Islam. And he said, you know, it would be a terrible thing. Allah so Allah. if I throw your statue on the floor, it will kill me. I thought this is ridiculous. It is a nonsense. <laughs> I looked at Jewish, Jewish religion, I thought, well, I can't be this because this is not just a race, it's a race uh, religion, it's a race as well. And I'm not of that race. So how can I join something I'm not a part of the club? It didn't make sense either. I thought, Allah, uh, I thought God created everything, not just one people. I looked at all these different philosophies, Marxism, ism, schism, schism and ism. <laughs> and at the end of the day, all they are is man-made, manufactured, man, made by man for man's ego. <laughs> and this I did not understand. 
a long time ago now, subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, uh, I was walking along Kensington High Street and a brother had a leaflet mm. and he was doing a very early version of Dawah. There was no Dawah 20 odd years ago. There was very few uh, Muslim reverts. I don't like the word convert. Uh, convert is to change. To revert is to go back. I have gone back to what my natural inclination should have been in the first place. There is no room for a convert. So I, um, I, I took the leaflet and I saw the word Islam and I thought, what is this thing? Whenever I was very little, my grandmother, because I grew up with my grandparents, took me um, to um, Hyde Park and I used to see Arabic graffiti on the, on the wall. And I used to like, uh, you know, the script. I used to like the, 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 the uh, and I used to wish I could understand what he said. Somewhere deep down inside, that must have stayed with me. Because when I got this, 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 this leaflet and it said Islam on it, I wanted to check this out. Then there were very few books on Islam. Uh, I found one. And it was uh, Guram Salwa's Belief and Teaching in Islam in its first edition. It's now in its ninth or so edition. It was very primitively, you know, a primitive edition then. And I read it. And I was, Alhamdulillah, I saw this script again. And I thought, ah, so it's this religion that has this script. The script that, you know, spoke to me from a, a young child that I thought, what is this thing? I was good at art. And I thought the script was beautiful. And, it, I, and, and of all scripts, it is the most beautiful in the world. And I looked at this thing, and I read, and I read, and then I read one thing. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu sumad. Lam yulid wa lam yulad wa lam yakulhu kufwan nahad. They weren't expecting that, mashallah, from you. The way you sound, mashallah. <laughs> this changed my life. Yeah, subhanAllah. And do you know the meaning of it, mashallah? To say that Allah is one. Yes. To say that anything that has a creator has to have, uh, is a creation has to have a creator. You don't have multiple creators for, uh, for something. If you have an architect, you have multiple architects. They all have infighting, they all fall apart. Excellent. You have to have unity. Ikhlas. That's right. To say Allah is one. The absolute. He has to be absolute. If there's not an absolution, if there's not completeness, then he is partial. If he is partial, he is not the Lord of all. So he cannot be the Lord Creator. He begets none. Of course, we are his creation, separate from him. Intact as a creation, but separate in our creation. He doesn't need a son, he doesn't need daughters, wives, or all the clutter that we have on earth. And nor is he forgotten. How can he be made of people or of something else? If something created him, that must be more powerful. Therefore, that must be Allah. So that had an impact on you. And like unto him, there is nothing. This is what had the, uh, the impact. Right. Because to say, unlike unto him, in the whole universe, nothing in like. the whole of everything, we can only see as far as our galaxy with a Hubble telescope, we can see uh, uh, crab nothing nebula like or whatever. Unto. This is as far as we can go. Now, beyond that, how many universes are there? And beyond that, how many universes are there? And the seven heavens, etc., etc. If there is nothing within the light years and thousands of millions of light years, there is nothing equal to him, and there is nothing like him, then he is Lord of all. And if he is Lord of all, then what am I doing standing on my feet? I must be on my face. Because he put me here, therefore should be gratitude. How did you embrace the show? Oh my God, I'm just to cut it short because of no. that. Ten minutes is going to finish. Very quickly. How did you embrace, I mean, when you took no. the shahada, did you go to a masjid or? Uh, there was nobody around to ask. I didn't want to ask a, a lot of the brothers in the street because there was people walking around. Then there was no conference. There was no literature of Islam. There was no little dawah tables out with the take a leaflet brother. There was nothing. So I thought, you, 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 you complaining about this, aren't you? At the moment you're saying you, sh you should have had that. You I could should have, have had that. Yes. And it shouldn't have been partialized to a community. You That's should right. not ghettoize Islam. That's right. You can't put a box around Allah. It is either Allah is everywhere or he or you as a as a people are putting him in a box. Allah with his knowledge is every with his knowledge is everywhere. No. Yeah. Not with himself. Himself no, not is with a double. His knowledge, with his ilm and with his hikmah. Excellent. Uh, you're talking about religion, you can't box religion, Islam and it's a box. It has no. to be for everybody. Humans put boundaries. There is no boundaries. There's no boundaries, of course. And so therefore when I looked at this thing I thought, where am I gonna go? So I looked through the phone book. Yes, in those days there were phone books. It's not, there was not a one-to-one or a one, yeah, one, right. one, one eight hundred. So I looked through there and I saw London Central Mosque. Right, Regent Park. Regent's Park. And I thought, okay, go there. I'll go there. 
and I looking like I did, and I wish I had photo of me as I did. I did a talk <laughs> last week. I had the photo of what I used to look like. And uh, going with this sort of look, <laughs> and remember, you had you had no beard. I, fr no, I had nothing. I had I had bright bright blue hair. You know, uh, uh, and you know, long hair, earrings, tattoos, vests. And you expect everybody to just to welcome you to a yeah. vicious life. Belt made of bullets. You know. me. So what happened when they saw you? I went in there, I took the bullet belt off because I thought it might be a bit disqui 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 disquieting, you know. And I tried to uh, tie my hair back as best as possible. And I, I said, to, I, I, I want to make shahada. And they said, they, they were surprised. They could, uh, the man couldn't believe speak it. Much they were baffled. And he just looked at me as if I was going to hurt him. I said, can you give, bring me someone you can speak English? So he brought me Abdullah, from, from, uh, who's the secretary of the London Mosque, Ben. The, the one from Saudi Arabia, isn't he? Uh, La, La, he's from uh, Musa. Oh, uh, right, in Musa. And uh, he said, you know, um, uh, uh, do, what do you understand about Islam? So I told him all I have read. And I'm an avid reader, so I read and read. And I read... Uh, so he was surprised. He was surprised then. And um, he said, OK, I think you understand, but you know you can't look like you do. I said, I don't want to look like I do. It's just that's all I have at the moment. I can change that, but I need to change my heart first. That's right, very good. And, and, uh, and you took it from there? I took my shahada. And when was that? When the day, please, if you remember the date, the uh, year? 1986, February the 4th. Right. Uh, Abdel Malik, I have to agree at the moment just to, uh, well, sort of stop you here. And then I'd say to you, just like Allah for this commentary and this, uh, you know, sort of short biography of your life. I would have liked it to be a bit longer. But remember that uh, we have uh, to go at the moment. I've got a family. I'm in the Isle of Wight today. And I'm really uh, sort of. Uh, very happy to meet the brothers here, especially yourself. Exactly. And definitely, inshallah, maybe we'll have a, a go at we'll see each other tonight as well. Maybe I should, I should play. As one final thing, go on. This is quite a, a, an interesting little twist. The Cat Stevens, who also became Muslim at that time, I was named after one of his songs with my original name. My, my original name was Matthew. I was named after Cat Stevens' song, and I ended up uh, t teaching with him at Regent's Park. He, did, uh, he taught the adults, I taught the children. When I learned uh, to write Arabic, I, uh, I was teaching the Arabic so, uh, to, the, to the small children. Man, so sure. how things come around, Allah has a, a wonderful plan, inshallah.